today's video, we've got a gameplay for you. This is me against Young Kiv. We matched up in a uh, little mud head to head, and I just wanted to do this video because I think it teaches uh, a very valuable lesson uh, to me, hopefully to you as well. And uh, we're going to be running through this. I don't know what just happened with the, with the footage here. So I'm in the Jets offensive playbook, and then on defense, I am in the multiple defense playbook. And basically, we're running dollar and bunch strong offset. Those my off. That's my offense, my defense. It's what I like. If you guys want to get ebooks on that stuff, exactly how I set them up and how we've updated those to kind of counter uh, some of the best tactics in the game, you can get all that by joining the Patreon. Link is going to be in the description below. Now, uh, the reason I didn't record over this, I was gonna do. I was gonna just basically get on, record a game, and talk about it. And I saw I matched up with Young Kim, and I was like, all right, well. I'll just record the game. I'm probably not going to win. It's probably not going to be a good game. I'm probably going to get my butt handed to me. Like, that's my mental state going into this game. And I think that really um, kind of sets the stage for what you're about to see. So, uh, basically, I'm thinking that, like, there's no way in heck I'm going to win this game. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try to just run my system, see if I can, see if I can, uh, you know, get a win. Well, as you see right here, we come out and we start with this little bubble screen. And honestly, decent. Like he didn't, you know, he he's not going to over adjust on his end. And obviously, you know, we just need to know that. So I'm thinking, okay, let me just run my, you know, standard first couple plays here. What I like to do, run a little RPO, run a little uh, double corner, just kind of see how he defends this. So um, real quick, he's going to gas me up from the jump. He's got all these pre-lit X factors. I don't think I have any pre-lit X factors uh, except for Derrick Henry, of course, which that comes into play a little bit later. But anyways, what you'll see here is this is double corner. Now, all I got to do is make this throw right here. I have the guy wide open, and this is a wide open dot. He's running the meta, uh, little cover three shell, cover three on the outside, and basically three deep, three under zone pressure, sending five. That's kind of what he's trying to uh, accomplish. And as you see, we blew past it, catch it, possession catch, and I'm like, okay, well, uh, not terrible start, so we'll, we'll go. So he's going to start to adjust to that, but we're going to go to our next script to play. Again, I script the first drive, and, and basically what I'm trying to accomplish in the first drive is I want to see how you're going to defend my foundational plays. How are you going to defend Durham? How are you going to defend corner, corner strike? How are you going to defend RPO? Um, and, and this is something I just started doing kind of recently, just saying, okay, I want to put like my main scheme out there, just kind of see what's open, what I like, how does it read, how does the progressions work. That's kind of what my thought process is. So anyway, here we go. We're going to run the play. And Kiv wants to win this game. I think this is his Super Bowl. I don't think this was mine. I think it was my playoffs. But uh, anyway, so you see here, three deep, three under pressure. He sends five. What's really important to understand, and this is something that we're going to talk a little bit more about as the game goes on, there's pressure in Madden, and there's pressure that is either created by your blitzes, or there's pressure that you feel as a quarterback, or there's pressure that you feel as a general player. One of the things that is really hard to teach, and it really just comes with repetition and repetition and repetition, in my opinion, is learning how to step up in the pocket, stay calm under pressure, make a read, right? This is something you're going to see that really I struggle with throughout this game. It's probably my worst part as a Madden player. I feel like I'm really good at teaching the game. I feel like I'm really good at understanding the game. And there's times in which I'm just terrible at execution. And if I could be better at execution, I feel like I would be even better of a Madden player than I am right now. Some of this becomes down to I just don't get enough reps in every single day uh, just because of doing YouTube and doing different things. I just and, and having a family. And you guys didn't know we we actually uh, started a church in Twin Falls, Idaho. And so, you know, because of all those things, you know, sometimes I just don't have as many reps as somebody like a, a Henry would have. And it's not an excuse, but it just comes back to say, had I had more reps or had I had more experience or had I be better under pressure, it probably would have uh, probably would come out more in my game. So when you're under pressure, it's really easy to panic. What I need to do a better job of is my takeaway. And I have some good moments in this game. Not every play is bad, but uh, I got to be better under pressure. I got to trust my system, trust my reads, trust my progressions, as opposed to uh, kind of tap dancing in the pocket. The same thing is true in real NFL. And same thing is true in Madden. So anyway, here you see. So I was at this point here. I'm like, okay, I don't really have anything. Um, but I, I, if I wait on this R1 route, he's going to come open. We do get the pressure picked up. And I kind of get a bad throw. And honestly, that's probably more my fault than it is anything. Um, a little bit of a bad free form there. That's a tough throw. And this, this game also taught me a lot about defense. And we're going to talk a little bit about that once I get on the defensive side of the ball. Here, this was a wrinkle I was kind of thinking about throwing in. Um, and the main reason why is because normally I come out with my bunch to the wide side of the field. And there's not a really quick way to flood the left side of the field if you think about it out of bunch strong. Like you can run the corner strike play or you can run Durham, but it takes a little time for that to develop. So I wanted to go to this and see if this see how this corner route would look. 
my thought was, okay, he's running cover three every single time pretty much. It's kind of like obvious, uh, or at least so far. That's kind of his plan. So I'm like, what would be really good against this is a short side corner route, uh, short side flood concept. So that's kind of what I go to here, trying to hit this corner route. I think I end up hitting it, catch it, get out of bounds. And I'm like, man, I'm actually moving the ball. <laughs> I, I'm actually kind of surprised, right? And this just goes to show that I don't play I don't play enough big time games against big time players, um, and that's you know something I, I want to get better at. And the problem for me is like all the tournaments are at night or they're on the weekends, and that's when I'm with my family. So that's what makes it a little bit tr tricky. Um, but anyway, this was a fun matchup, and I was glad I got to got to play Kiv. I've never I don't think I've ever played him before, and um, yeah, I learned a lot in this game. So anyway, go back to double corner. So now I see what he's gonna do. So and I try to fit this throw in, and. <sighs> This, uh, this, this, just like even watching this tape back, I'm like, there's got to be a better way to throw this route, and it should be open. This is the adjustment that I'm expecting. Now, if you look at this closely, here's what he does. I'll show you my mouse here. So, this this player right here is in a vert hook. Okay, this player is in a vert hook. This player is in a purple, but he shaded outside up, and this guy is now going to be in a cloud flat. So he's going to defend this route. That's the purpose of that adjustment. What's open? This entire flat area right here. So what I also think could be open is this seam, and my goal is to throw it here, and because this guy is deep end zone KO, he won't light up if the ball is caught outside the hash. So that's kind of what my thought process is here, um, and yeah, oh, this is just frustrating watching this back. I don't know why I continue to think I can make that throw. It's like it's open, but it's not open, and I throw a pick six, <laughs> not just a pick, but of course my luck, it's a pick six because I have terrible user stick skill. Um, I always, I just, I'm just, you know, I'm just old, I guess. I don't know. Um, I'm almost 30 years old, guys. Um, so anyway, yep, throw the pick. I'm clipping it. Like, man, I wish I wouldn't have thrown that pick. And now I'm really thinking like, crap. You know, Kiv's about to put his foot on my neck. I don't got a chance. You know, I'm like, I moved the ball a little bit, but I'm, I'm thinking like, man, I'm in, I'm in trouble here, right? So coming out next drive here, and we'll see what we can do. <laughs> So I'm all right. I'm expecting okay. He's gonna do this now. What I'm just trying to do here, first drive, and everybody knows this that knows anything about it, at a high level. You just don't want to be in the middle of the field because zones just work differently. Your routes work differently. It's just it's harder. It's just harder to pass when you're in the middle of the field. You want to be on a hash mark. So I'm just trying to get on a hash mark. So I don't really care like if he stops the play, and I'm not even gonna try. I actually low key have this bubble screen, um, but this is actually I don't know what he was doing to these guys. I want to say they're in outside quarters because they are playing the bubble screens really well for being baseline. He wasn't hard flat in them, I'm pretty sure. Um, and, and yeah, really good. Goes for a strip, doesn't get it. But that's fine. I just get on a hatch. That's all I wanted to do. Okay. Um, all right. So second 11, we're going to go back to Durham. I feel like that was the play that had the most success with. And you see this adjustment. So, again, I knew this was kind of what he was going to do. This guy's going to be on a cloud. This guy's going to be on a vert hook. This was kind of the standard way that, and I've talked about this before, that this is kind of the, the way that people stop double corner. Okay. So what that leaves open is this flat pass right here. And, and I honestly, I'm just kind of looking back at this tape and going, man, I should have thrown this so much more. Um, anyway, he's wide open here. So I try to throw it out there, get a nice yard, get a nice gain. And uh, we're able to get up field and, and actually get some movement here on the ball. So kind of like, all right, well, we'll see what we do. And again, like mentally, I'm just thinking, I'm literally thinking going into this game, this is, this is not good. It's just, it's just what I think. I'm literally thinking, man, I already lost the game. Um, you know, I already lost the game. I'm playing one of the best players in the world. There's no way I can beat him. Um, but there's something that I was trying to little, honestly, kind of lab. Because I was expecting, this is a play I literally have never ran before. I shouldn't have ran this. But again, I'm expecting this adjustment. I'm expecting this guy to go here. I'm expecting this guy to go here. So my thought was, well, maybe if I bring this guy here and put him on a streak, he will hold this middle third defender long enough for this player to get over the top of the defense. It's kind of what I was thinking here. And again, I'm like, man, it kind of looks open. And I get it out of reach. And I'm like, Ugh. so um, so I'm like, all right, I got to stop testing that and just, just play a little more basic. And just get back to kind of like, all right, how do you play? How do you play, right? So go to Durham here. Durham seems to be the play that is the most logical. Got the flat, throw that. Start making him respect that route uh, to me really, really important. 
So uh, the main purpose of that is, again, just trying to make him respect the fact that we can throw the ball to the flat to the right quick. So you got to have a hard flat defender. Once he has to put a hard flat, then what that does, this guy's going to go here. This guy's going to go here. It should open up this running back right here, and you'll see here on third and four probably what he'll happen. He should be playing hard flat here because he's got to stop this. See how there? And then running back's open right there, and then he's got to go use that, and then this is open. This is why this is one of the best plays in the game. And this is truly why I love this offense because corner strike and Durham – counter each other really really well i think they're the best two play combo in the game because they just fit really well together um, and then here goes cover two on the outside i'm able just to high ball this corner route quick snap corner strike one of my personal favorite plays and we're able to um we're able to actually score and i'm like oh crap i just scored on young give i'm literally like you know you know comp player shocked and, and I'm, I'm not i'm not even close to saying that i'm a better player than Kib by any means um, obviously he's just accomplished way more. It was just cool to score on him. And I'm thinking like, man, I scored on young kid. I'm content. I can like, just, we can just quit the game out and I'm done, but I want to kind of see how I play. So we play defense and uh, we're going to come out and I'm like, okay, I wonder what I'll do. I'm just going to go with my standard bunch defense. This is in the ebook. Um, he goes to bunt this right here. And this, um, this formation just gives me such a tough time. I struggle to defend this. He hits that seam strike right out of the gate. I kind of know that's open, but I just, I just kind of like, uh, I just, you know, I just kind of like let it, let it go. And then this is where everything starts to change. So um, he goes to bunch. I don't, uh, his, he should hit the C route to the right, able to hit it. And then here he just does something. To, it's coming up. He just does something kind of odd, but he goes back to bunch here. He's going to go nasty. Now, exactly what he threw last time. He threw this old seam stick right here. And honestly, um, this wasn't even like, like I don't even, I, I was just completely expecting the seam strike to beat me. But what I did was this, instead of this guy being in the yellow, which I normally like to do against bunch formations, I'm going to put this guy in the yellow. Pretty much everything else is the same. And watch what happens here. I mean, this is, and then I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so he throws that and I'm like, whoa, he just threw that. <laughs> and, um, and then we get out of there with Bo and we get a pick six. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, man, maybe I can play. <laughs> you know, and, and it's like, um, you know, just dumb enough to real, maybe think I could potentially win here. So uh, so all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, well, let, let's keep playing the game. And this is just something that I want to say. You know, I know we're already 12 minutes into this. And if you don't really care about Madden, you probably already clicked off the video. But I did want to say this. I've been playing Madden for a really long time. And one of the things that I continue to learn, and you're going to see throughout this gameplay, is you got to play the game, not the name. You really do. Um, and it's such a simple thing. But it's really something I struggle with, and it's something a lot of people struggle with. And, and Kiv probably didn't play his best game in this game. He probably didn't play his best game. Not even, not you know, nothing on that at all. I'm sure he didn't. I don't even know. If, you know, it could be a very possibility. This isn't even Kiv I'm playing. It could be somebody that was just using his account, right? So um, I want to talk about this defense for just a second. But... But I got to play the game, not the name. And you'll see at multiple points in this game, I play the name. And and, and I'm like, man, it's Kiv. It's Kiv. It's Kiv. I've got to, you know, I've got to, I've got to whatever, right? And no, you just got to execute your stuff, you know, and you got to get better, okay? So I wish I would have looked at that. I, I wish I would have looked at this game like that. And um, at certain points, I started to look at it. Like right about this time, I'm like, oh, man, I just, you know, I'm just playing good. I just got to play, keep playing good. And I, and I start playing really good. This is becoming one of my favorite defenses for trip sign in. Um, this is a defense you'll see against another opponent. I played um, trick slimy worm who runs uh, pretty much trips every single play. This defense gives trips players a lot of trouble. The reason why is because a lot of people, when you do cross man against trips, they like to throw this little flat to triangle. This will take that away. It'll also take away pretty much everything that he's going to run. There is one thing Kiv figured out that is kind of a, uh, Kind of a frustrating thing that happened to me later this game, and we'll show that. This crossman here, a lot of people think, well, I could just throw this fade. This crossman should normally take that away. And then, obviously, all you have to do is basically take the tight end. That's kind of the main objective defensively. So, anyway, this is my, one of my favorite trip steves. And you see we play really good trip steve. He gets screamed at. And, I mean, that's kind of frustrating. Like, that's kind of frustrating. But, you know, maybe he's just got the best pocket presence in the world. And, again... One of the refrains that I've just, and really the whole reason I wanted to do this commentary is because I don't, I, um, I don't by any means not, not trying to, sh you know, say anything about Kiv or anything. And then I get this lurk, <laughs> I got this lurk and I was like, oh my gosh. Um, and I'm like, man, I'm actually playing kind of decent. And so, so essentially I mean, you have to anticipate certain things and cer certain routes, right? He runs, I know he's in Colts. I know he likes double post. One of the most popular setups of double post is this guy on a Texas route or an in route. 
Um, and I don't know. I, I would assume he's on a Texas here. But anyway, I also, the way I structure my defense is this guy is going to be on a half. And you'll see this later, but he'll take away the double post post route. And then the C route's wide open. I'm conceding the C route, honestly. Um, but most people don't make the C route read. So I know I'm going to start here. But if I see that running back go out, I'm biting back down every single time. So that's exactly what I do here. I go right. Nope. Bite back down. It might have been verticals with a streak. I don't know. And I get a lurk and I'm like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> I'm in control of the game. I'm like, I'm in control of the game. I'm not just, you know, now I'm up a stop. I was down a stop. Now I'm up a stop. The game completely flips. And I'm like, man, I'm playing pretty good. <laughs> um, and. And this is this is probably the best part of the game where I'm playing like this, and and, and Kim's probably honestly playing a little bad, um, just kind of like maybe trying to maybe trying to press a little bit, uh, or just like score fast to get the game over with. I'm sure because he's probably just playing this just to get some coins or whatever, you know. Um, but anyway, so he goes to bunch. I got that. See the deep half here. So he goes double post. Watch this, and and he was throwing a pick. He's throwing the ball to the post, and and he's missing that that we're halving there, and I don't know why he's not seeing that. I mean, obviously he knows that, so or he's gonna know that. You'll see that eventually. But anyways, um, goes to the seam street, got the yellow there. This feel like pretty decent defense. That should have been an interception. Um, and I'm like, man, this is kind of good. <laughs> um, this is kind of decent defense. I'm actually shocked. <laughs> um, like I'm actually surprised. And and it, and I wouldn't say it's necessarily good defense. I would just say it's working. It's so he goes double corner. And honestly, the more I watch these double corners, especially if someone's in Colts, I'm willing to concede that throw right there. And the reason why is because if you look at this closely, um, it's like right here. I, I just curl flatted this guy. And I really believe in curl flatting super tall players because they just jump stuff. So right about here, as you throw the tight end, I would assume, yeah. Throws the tight end. He's got this. My user's terrible. It's always, I just, I wish I wish my user would be better. I've got to work on that. But anyway, when you throw this right here, I'm like, okay, I've got this. Now he pass leads this up. This is why this combo is really not, it's, it's the best way in this formation to attack this defense. But it's not the greatest combo. And the reason why is because you have to, to get this over the curl flat, you got to throw it up here. Well, this guy's in a third. He's going to out deep out KO. So he should be able to come down and KO that. And honestly, again, I feel like that could have been an interception. So now I'm like, oh my gosh, I got Kiv on a fourth down. Like, and I'm actually like covering stuff. Like what is going on? Um, you know, and I'm just playing my, my standard defense. Like there's really nothing uh, crazy about it, but now I get a little aggressive here and I wish I wouldn't have done this. Um, I think I end up getting the stop though. Yeah, I do get the stop here. Um, so I'm trying to get a little aggressive. I'm honestly like, I just really want to stop. One of the mistakes that I make, uh, and I th actually think this is a mistake. So I'm trying to get a stop. Now the pressure is the main thing I do. Well, what I do poorly is my coverage. If you watch here on the left side, the scissor adjustments, what I do, this scissor is fine. Um, it did give him a little bit of a different look and made him hesitate. I was kind of anticipating verticals, but I got double post. The drag is there if he wants that, uh, or the, I'm sorry, not the drag, the C route, and the running back's wide open. I mean, but obviously, and this is another little factor that I did want to say, we talk about defense a lot on the channel, pressure is so important on defense. It is so important. It doesn't mean you send the blitz every single play, but having the threat of pressure consistently and at certain points sending it, it really does make a big difference. So he, he wants to throw, he's probably trying to throw the running back, right? Um, he ends up, you know, just getting screamed at and, and basically the timer, the time runs out. So here on offense, I'm like, Oh my gosh, again, <laughs> I'm like, man, man, don't let me score a touchdown. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, man, I can't believe that I'm, I'm winning this game. Um, and so I go to corner strike. This is one of my favorite setups. When people start to man up square or do hard flats and or uh, cloud flats, what I like to do is this right here. And the tight end you see is wide open on that little flat. Very simple, uh, but I think pretty effective little combo. Gets me down here. Honestly, I'm just kind of trying to make shift a score. I know that this RPO is good, so I just throw this, break a tackle, get down to the three. Um, and then I go to this little RPO out of, or no, no, no. What did I do here? This was actually a bad play call by me. I don't know why I did that. I tried too hard. I feel like my red zone and I go to this iPhone slot. So remember this real quick. So I go to this iPhone slot. I literally never, I've never called this play. 
um, in a game. But I just know this is a really good run, right? Um, so he comes out, and I'm like, oh, man, this is wide open, and I can just run that. And, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, um, I just scored. <laughs> and now it's, now it's 28-7. And all of a sudden, I'm like, man, I'm going to win this game. He can't. I, I'm actually winning. And I'm now. I, now here's what. Here's the important thing. Twenty-eight to seven. There's four minutes in the second quarter. He gets ball at half. Okay. I'm thinking in my head, there's no way he can win the game. There's no way he can win the game. I've won the game. I just have to make sure that I don't lose the game. And now the pressure for some. I I took as a Madden player. I took all the pressure back on myself. And I started to basically try to not lose the game as opposed to try to win the game. And really what I should have been doing, and this is the big takeaway from this game, in my opinion, is I should have just been playing the game, not trying to win, not trying to lose, just trying to execute at a high level every single time. And um, that's kind of like what I take away from this game. So anyway, um, I feel like, man, it's really good defense. He goes double post. Watch this right here. Deep half does exactly what I wanted to do. He gets a bad throw and we get a pick. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, it's over. The game's over. There's nothing he can do to stop me. The, the game is literally over right here. All I got to do in my head, I'm like, I don't even need to score. I just need to not give him the ball back. And I start just doing stuff that's like, what are you doing? You know, like, what are you doing? So I go to this, that little streak thing. I'm trying to hit the tight end up the seam. Uh, what I was telling you about with the double streaks here. And I'm like, man, this should be open. Um, and, it, and, and and then I get that. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that should have been a dot. I don't know why that's not there. And, you know, here we are, second and 10. <laughs> and I'm like, like I said, I'm just like, man, I this game is over. I just literally have to execute. It. And then watch what I just start doing random stuff. Like, I stop calling Durham. I'm trying to, like, take, the, take his head off uh, in one play. You know, I'm still making good reads. I take my end route. You know, this is good. Now, at this point right here, I'm like, oh, my God, I just need to, you know, get three points and not give him the ball back. And uh, <laughs> and then I just start doing stupid stuff. Like, it's just so bad. As I watch this back, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go double corner with the tight end. Like, this route combo, I've never called this route combo before. Never called this route, route combo before. And then I get screamed at, and then I get a throwaway, and now I get an intentional grounding. And I, you just watch, like, this play call is so stupid of me. And I just want you to watch the adjustments. And this is what I want to talk about when we talk about being a systematic player. I've talked a lot about that on the channel, and I totally just stopped doing that up 28-7. The system got me to 28-7. And then Cody starts doing just stupid stuff. As you can see right here, I'm thinking, well, maybe the block and release will, will chip here or we'll get a pickup. And I don't know why, but we just didn't block this blitz. And I'm thinking, okay, no problem. I'll just throw the ball away. And I was even thinking that. I was like, all right, if this isn't there, I'm just going to throw the ball away, right? Um, and as you can see here, like, I really don't have anything. Um, the cloud is going to play that tight end. I've got to throw the ball away. The play's dead, right? But it's like, why do I call this route come? Because look at this. I should have just called uh, Durham. Look at the adjustments. Third, third, third. He can't do anything else. There's only two adjustments. And this is when, when I talk about systems thinking, we have been very specific in the lab of saying, okay, corner strike. How do you stop double corner? This right here is the main way. You got to have three players over to the left side. And then even that should leave the flat open. But this is the main way they're going to have to stop that, which means they cannot stop Durham. But my stupid head <laughs> is like, well, I've just got to show you, you know, I don't even know why I ran this play. I literally don't know why I ran this play. I don't know why I called this play. This is, this is where everything starts to change. I'm like, oh crap, you know? And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, like I threw it in, I got an intentional grounding. And now all of a sudden I'm like, oh crap, I got to make sure that I don't blow it. That's my, my self-talk. That's my mental. And I'm in the middle of the field and I, I kind of overthink that a little bit. I should go to Durham right here. I don't, I go to wide trail. This is not a terrible play call. Um, this is not a terrible play call because he is doing flat cloud third, and then he's got a cloud here. So the drag should be open here. Um, we actually set up protection, but look at this. I, I didn't, um, the other thing I wasn't doing is I was walking the running back, but I kind of randomly just stopped setting up pass protection. When you're playing a really good player, that understands how to blitz, you got to set up your pass protection. It is the most important thing. <laughs> 
And I just don't. And as you, I mean, the running back ends up actually picking him up. I got the drag, take the drag, get up field. And I'm like, okay, we're back. We're fine. No big deal. Third and seven. Don't, you know, do anything stupid. Don't do anything stupid. Now, again, I should be calling Durham here. I should. I should be calling Durham. I should be calling Durham. I'm kind of thinking maybe he's going to, like, expect. This is where you start to think too much. This is something interesting um, that I actually just heard. I, I put it on my Twitter. This was a quote from Mike Leach, and I'm a huge fan of Mike Leach. And rest in peace. Now, I probably will literally mention him in any gameplay video I do. I'll probably talk about Mike Leach because he's, he's right on so many things. One of the things he says is, a cloudy mind will equal slow legs. A cloudy mind will equal slow legs. What he's kind of getting at here is the, the more you think, the more you have to think at a high level, it makes you slower. Your progressions will be slower. Your execution won't be as sharp. And that is what you see right here. So I go to, um, I go to this play flood. It's not a bad play call, but it's just a bad, I mean, it's, it's, it's a bad play call, but even that, um, it's, it's kind of fine. Now right here, I, and this is just so stupid of me. Like, I just, I'm thinking, man, I got to be able to throw this route. I'm thinking that in my head. I'm like, this is open. I got to be able to throw it. My eyes are lying to me. And look at this. This guy's in a hard flat. This corner is going to be wide open to the sideline and the in routes wide open. But instead my stupid, ugh, idiotic thing. And then I throw an interception. I'm so mad at that pick that literally let him back into the game. And I mean, I had everything open and I just like, again, I just, I'm like, oh, kid's probably going to have defense for this. And I don't know what to do. And you just got to go through your progressions, guys. It is so important. And then here I just start playing stupid. I mean, like, honestly, my defense is still kind of fine, but like, look at my user here. Like, what am I using? I'm using nothing. Um, you know, the pressure is what's saving me. He's missing the running backs, got the running backs, had the running back. Um, and I'm just, I'm just so mad at myself. I'm just so mad at the way I played at this point from this point forward. I'm like, man, what did you do? <laughs> um, and they're like, he goes right back to the same route. Combo. This is just bad defense on my part. Um, this is just bad defense. I'm slow. I'm, I'm slow again, cloudy mind. I'm thinking, right. Uh, what I should have done. Right here. So number one, I don't have to send this four man every single time. Okay. That's number one. I should have sent this four man a little bit less than I did because the sheds in this game are really good. Okay. I do have the Reggie White, I guess, pre lit. So there it is. Um, and I probably have Calvin Johnson too. But, anyways, so what I do here is I don't get this guy in a curl, in a hook curl. This, I just, I just get quick. I, this guy does not go in the hook curl and everything's open. Literally everything's open. Running back's open. Ends up taking the running back. And now I'm like, crap, he's going to score seven. He's look at that. He's three for 12, three picks. Like I, you couldn't ask for a better, a better defensive performance up to this point. The defense has shut him out um, aside from the pick six. And then he throws this. Now I want to talk about this dot right here. This actually kind of threw me off. Um, and, and this is where I just, I'm kind of confused how this was open. I get, okay. So what he does, I think he streaks this guy. Yep. Okay. So this is kind of a bunch dot now, I would assume, because we've seen multiple people do this combo. So it's double post. He's blocking the running back to pick up the pressure. He's got this guy on a flat. This guy's on a streak. 85 is on a streak. This guy's on a crosser. What probably happens is the middle third has to kind of bite on this for a second, and it leaves this big void here. Um, I was hope I would have thought the hook curl would delay that, but I did shade that hook curl underneath. So what you see is this little window right there becomes open. I was kind of thinking, man, K, I'd get a KO there. I was thinking I'd get some help, um, but I don't. And honestly, it's a good dot. It's a good dot by him. I'm not mad at that defensive play call. I just like, okay, good dot. He threaded the needle in a tight window. One of the things that's really important, I did want to address this real quick, is when you're playing uh, somebody, sometimes they will make a good throw or make a good, but they, they, you want to make them have to do it consistently. Throws that, in my opinion, I felt like that could have been an interception. It wasn't. Um, kind of bad adjustments by me, honestly. And and I got to end up going user of the tight end. I didn't want to have to use her that tight end route. The crosser, again, the, the reason I like the deep half on the solo side, when you deep half the solo side, he'll play the verticals crosser. He'll also play the double post route, which are the two most popular big hitter routes in bunch. You see he goes to it there. And I'm like, okay, I could, I could hold down here. And I'm thinking, like, just hold a three, man. Like, 
it's it's not hard to hold the three once you're at about the 20 yard line because there's just a limited amount of space. So he goes to this again. You got to expect this seam streak. So I got this guy in a hook curl. I get my adjustments off here, but here's the problem. I have this guy in a hook curl, which basically means I don't have anything for this right here. So what you see, he goes double corner. I don't hate the way I play defense there, and I end up getting a KO. This is why it's important to make them throw the short corner over over the top as opposed to flatter. If you if he was able to pass lead that flatter to the sideline, that would have been um, that would have been open. So anyway. And sometimes they'll still catch that. So, I mean, it is what it is. Here, my defense gets all jacked up. I got to burn a timeout, which is actually kind of unfortunate, uh, just situationally. You know, just kind of bad. Um, again, there were so many, like, key moments in this game. And I think really one of the big things is I try to do too much defensively. He was struggling with my base defense. I should have just stayed in that. But, like, why would I call this right here? I go to DB. This is just a random play call. It's a good defense. But not for what he was doing. And you're going to see that. Like, it, it's just, this was this was a bad play call. This was me trying to press, trying to get a stop, trying to play big, trying to, trying to like, put it on him here. And this is just a bad play call. I mean, it's just, everything's open. You see here, the C route's wide open. Um, he probably ends up throwing that. We get no pressure. Bo Jackson low-key could have knocked that out, but didn't. And we go down here, and basically he scores. There's nothing really to talk about there. All right, so second down. Um, so now I go to this. This is, uh, I mean, this is a fine play call. I'm just trying to get in a hash again. So we just take our little drag underneath. And I'm like, okay, this isn't terrible. I'm fine with this. Like, we're fine. We're, we're literally 100% fine, right? Um, and I'm thinking, all right, just go down, score. Don't do anything stupid. And look at this again. So here, watch this. So you see how this guy goes down right right off rip? It means that he's in a hard flat. He doesn't get enough width to be a cloud. So this is why I love to quick snap corner strike. Had I just held onto this for a second longer, this corner right over here is open. I kind of forced this, um, which low-key could have been intercepted. Wasn't a great decision. Um, but I know that if I possession catch this, I'll be okay. So I end up possession catching that. I'm okay. He probably could have picked that off, to be honest. We're both kind of playing bad offensively, I would say. And again, this this play call is so stupid. I mean, this play call is so stupid. It ended up working out for me, but just stupid play calls, man. Like you see, I mean, and you see how slow I am at executing the bad play calls. That's hopefully you, you catch that. I go to this. Um, this I don't. Ugh. Again, I just am struggling with this blitz. I'm my my uh, pass protection is not. You see how quickly he sheds that. That pisses me off. Um, you see how quickly he sheds uh, Dre Archer. This is why Dre Archer needs to not be on my field. Um, so Harold comes through. The pass pro kind of works. Um, and honestly, there's there's this kind of bug in the game right now, I think, sometimes where your slide protections don't register, which happens to me a lot. And I don't know why it happens to me. But anyway, so I blocked this guy here. And now, okay, at this point, if you look at this, guess where I want to throw the ball? I want to throw the ball to the curl. He's wide open, right? Exactly what I wanted to have happen, happen. He's kind of lurking back to this, but with set feet lead, he can't really get there. I was also thinking I could just take this shot. Or actually, I think I am throwing circle. I'm trying to take this shot over the top. So I'm just trying to really honestly just get rid of the ball. Um, because, again, just look at the shed animation he gets here. And then, of course, why wouldn't you get a D-line pick? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you get a D-line pick? So he has 30 seconds now, and now all of a sudden I'm like, oh, crap. I'm like, oh, crap. Not good. And now I'm like kind of panicking. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose the game, which is terrible self-talk again. And it's just putting yourself at such a bad advantage. And we scream right at him. Like, if you're watching this, like, he's kind of bad. And he, again, he, I think he was just playing bad offensively. But he's kind of bagged. And then I just start doing random stuff to let him back in the game. You'll see it here again. I mean, you'll see it again right here. Like, um, this is fine defense. I wouldn't say it's, like, ideal. I backed off this guy, put him on a vert. Take, see how it takes away the seam streak? But now I got to get underneath on that drag a little better than I did. And honestly, pretty good play by him. I have a, some ideas for how I would slow down Bunch Strong Nasty. I feel like Bunch Strong Nasty is the formation that just gives me the most trouble, and I need to put some time into the lab and actually think about how to stop that. I feel really good against Bunch, really good against Trips, really good against Tight, 
but these bunch nasty formation, specifically bunch nasty, even. Um, I feel pretty good against bunch strong too, but bunch nasty is the one that I'm like, oh my gosh, right here. This is just bad defense. Again, he's uh, short side. I just wanted to break this down real quick, explain what happens. So um, this guy's in a third, as you can see. I have, I do this every single time. I always put this guy in an outside quarter because he will play the tight end wheel route if they run this combo. I always put him in a quarter. I don't get the adjustment off. I'm trying to send too many press, too much pressure for no reason. And he's able to make a throw. Now, be it it was a bang bang throw. I was I was I had a guy right there uh, with pressure, but it puts him right in the scoring range. And it's like just get your stupid outside quarter off. Stop trying to do too much defensively. Another example of that. Now, right here, I actually was kind of surprised that this was open. Um, this is bad defense on me again. And the reason why is because I've talked about this before. And it's good that, again, this is another little tip for you guys about just learning in general, something you need to look at. This is why film study is so important. This is why studying your losses is so important. Even though it's painful, even though you don't want to do it, it is important because you can see yourself do things that are stupid and that it will register in your head not to do them again, hopefully. So the and, and, and I've been doing some research on just the, the learning in general, and they basically say most of the learning occurs when in the mistakes. So the more, mis you know, it's like the Michael Jordan quote, quote I've missed more than uh, 9,000 shots in my career and that whole thing about, um, you know, I fail over and over again, and that is why I succeed, right? So when you fail, it's an opportunity to learn. Okay, so... I talked about this in another video I did, but basically when you get down here, you're trying to use the sidelines and the um, back, uh, like outside of the end zone as an extra defender. So if you were to run double post here, you can't throw this post route up, up in this once it clears this hook curl. If this guy's in a hook curl, he takes away double post. He takes away verticals with the crosser. You can't throw it. All I have to do is leave this guy in a third or leave him in a or put him in a quarter. If I do either one of those two things, this play probably gets stopped and this guy should have been in a curl flat. Instead, what I do is I deep half him because I'm 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 kind of panicking and I I don't know why I, the only reason I could say as to why I did that was because I was expecting double post and I I just it was just a bad decision. So my user, the way I user this play is also kind of bad. It's not terrible. But basically, my decision as user is like, okay, I'm going to trust. I'm going to trust what I have here on the right side to play this basic post or basic in route. I, I'm not letting him throw that. I'm not letting him throw that, right? So at this point, this is fine. This hook curl does exactly what it's supposed to do. I don't know what this route is. Um, it's oh, it's that okay, okay. It's that double move. Okay, been fair, pretty decent route. Um, probably knows something about this double move. This quarter, ha I I have to put that in a quarter. It it may not for sure play it, but it definitely would have had a better shot than a deep half does. And as you can see, I let him back in the game. <laughs> so uh, that's that's pretty much the first half. Um, let's get into the second half. So now I'm thinking, okay, he's probably now I'm like, okay, he's completely back in the game. And I got to just like take a breath and stop playing stupid. And so we play really good defense. We back him up. There it is. Boom. If you're not running, if you don't, if you didn't learn one, anything from this game, hopefully you see how good the dollar a gap blitz is. Cause neither one of us, are, both of us are really struggling against it. Okay. So right here adjustment. So this is where I start to send three and I'm thinking, okay, I need to start sending three a little bit more mixing that in this guy. My plan now is I want this guy in a yellow and I want to man up this guy. I'm thinking this isn't terrible defense, but look what happens. Instead of him manning up here, I fat finger it, hit the wrong button. He mans up on somebody over here, probably circle or the tight end. That is not open. I should have got a pick there. And now every time you get screwed when you're already kind of panicking, it really, it makes it, it makes you that much more on tilt, makes you that much, you're, you, you become more pressure. And this right here is, in my opinion, a very frustrating play. So, okay. So what I did, I did the same trips. Yeah, I man, this guy up here. I man, this guy up here. I man, this guy up here. Okay. Now this is, um, I'm pretty sure this is Rondé Barber. Okay. This is Ty Law. Ty Law is slow as crap. Rondé Barber is slow, but he's not that slow, right? He's, he's okay. So, um, I feel pretty good about this. Like at this point right here, I'm like, okay, this is stopped. Everything stopped. There's nothing open. The only thing that can possibly be open is this tight end uh, post. 
That's the only thing he'll have. You see here, the, the hook curl does a really, or vert hook does a good job. Third's going to, the slant's governed. This guy beats him off the line initially, and this is just a bad decision on my part. I didn't see that he beat him that bad. So I'm thinking, I just, all I got to do is cover the tight end. All I got to do is cover the tight end. All I got to do is cover the tight end, and the play's dead. Now, another thing I should have done is this guy should have been in the middle third. I was trying to put him in the middle third uh, because this guy's an avert. I was trying to put him in a middle third, and I just didn't get the adjustment off. Um, again, you know, just bad on my part. But at this point right here, I thought, well, Barber could catch up to him. These are hard throws this year. I have to take the tight end. I have to take the tight end. I have to take the tight end. Look what happens. I bump him. I bump him. <laughs> and he scores. Uh, that was that was really frustrating. So I'm like, gosh darn it, man. Um, you know, I, I, I literally just, in my, my mental is like, I just sold this entire game. Like, all right, well, let's just go back to, let's see if we can, let's see if we can score. <laughs> That's it. That's like, I'm like, well, the game's over. This is funny to me that this was my head. The game's over. So let's just go play. That's, that's what I literally thought in my head. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to go try to score seven. No big deal. The game's already over. I thought I was going to lose anyway. No big deal. Nothing hurt. So I go back to my system. <laughs> Look what I'm calling Durham. Look at this hard flat. That's not open, or I can't throw that, but his user to choose is here. So guess where I get to throw? Right there. And, and get, we, it's just everything's open. When I'm sticking to my systematic approach, he can't play with me. <laughs> like, or at least he in this game, he probably could in other games. If we played again, he'd probably kill me. But, my, but because I just overthought it, and here, I'm like, that's got to be open. No, it's not open. I've thrown it three or four times, and the same thing's happened every time. But by God, I'm still going to try to throw it. And it's like, Cody just called Durham. Durham is open every single play. As I'm looking back at this, I'm like, oh, my gosh. He was set on taking away double corners. Like, I should have called Durham more. Here's a little flat pass. I love that route. I think most people are just sleeping on that. I feel like that tight end route's like a slant out because it beats man coverage too. Um, and I'm like, okay, just let me get a first down here. Let's let me get a first down. I'm like, I'm, I'm honestly kind of begging for a first. Um, and I'm just like, let's just get, let me get a first down. He honestly should have stopped me right there. The I'm, I'm, I've got a little, um, the one reason I like Dre Archer is I feel like I can swerve tackles with him a little better. So I did a little, little, little to the left thing just to get slide by him a little bit. Um, again, what's this play call? You know, what am I trying to do here? I do have the tight end open, um, and low key, he might, <laughs> that was kind of, ah, that was kind of like, I kind of got lucky there. I probably shouldn't have been a pick. Um, the tight end was open. I just got, I just passed, I freeformed it poorly. And, and again, it's like, why are you not calling Durham? Look at the adjustments every single time flat. I'm just, I'm not reading the defense. I'm not even looking. And it's like, Cody, if you would have just looked, Durham is wide open every single play. Every single play, it's wide open. Now, I thought I, I, this probably should have been an interception. I've just seen people throw this before, and honestly, I was like, I just want to try to throw this. So I just high-pointed it, and, and, and I got him out of reach. I'm like, okay, <laughs> noted. That might be something I come back to. I'll have to test that out because if they can't lurk that, that's a really good read. So anyways, throw a little bubble screen. I'm just like, let's just let me get seven. Just let me get seven. And he does. Now I'm like, okay, we're back. <laughs> you know, we're back. I'm, I'm winning the game. I just got to get a stop. No big deal. We're fine. That's, that's what I'm thinking mentally. Okay. So again, when the pressure comes off and I'm just playing the game, I'm playing pretty good, right? I'm playing pretty good. When I start to pressure myself, put the pressure on myself, all of a sudden I start doing some of the dumbest things that you've ever seen. And you'll see that on this drive defensively. I'm like, okay, I'm just like, honestly, literally, I'm just thinking to myself, man, don't let me get a stop here. I saw, I'm thinking like, just, I just want to get a stop. And, 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 and these are honestly, I got, I got two middle thirds. Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you have two middle thirds? Um, and he's dotting me up. He's made some plays, but I'm honestly not even sweating. I'm just like, all right, let's just play. And I'm not even like really pressing anymore. I'm just kind of playing and I'm just kind of running my stuff. And I think there's such a big lesson there for me and for all of us is when you're playing somebody, don't play the, don't play the name, play the game, you know, don't play the name, play the game. He hits me that C route dot. And I'm like, crap, he's about to score. Um, but no big deal. You know, I'm not supposed to win anyway. I'm not going to win anyway. Like, I don't really care, but look what I do here. 
Hook girl. Look what he throws. He throws something stupid. He throws something stupid. The hook girl gets it. I get a pick. And I'm like, I just won the game. Mentally, I'm thinking, I just won the game. And guess what? Cody, just you can't lose this. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking to myself. You cannot lose this game. So sure enough, even though I'm on a hash, I'm going to throw a bubble screen, even though he plays pretty good bubble defense. I have the bubble screen wide open, but I run the ball because I'm an idiot. And I'm scared, right? I'm scared. You can't play scared. Uh, you can't. You can't play scared. It's super important. Um, I'm, I'm scared of losing the game, so I run the ball, even though the bubble screen is standing wide open. Now, thankfully, I actually do finally, finally uh, figure out, you probably should call Durham. Now, right here, my... <laughs> Oh, uh, this is, this is, I want this one back. So this, this pass right here, if you try to lead it upfield, they always overthrow it. But if you lead it like horizontal, like flat, they typically don't overthrow it. And I, I, I stupid, my stupid self, I just, <laughs> I just make that silly mistake and I free form it up instead of out. And it's like, you've thrown that so many times. You've just got to be better there. And again, why am I making these little mistakes? Well, because I'm scared. I'm playing a good player. I really want to win. And I'm I kind of at this point and like played bad enough to let him back in the game. Now I want to win. Now right here, look what I do. Now I'm like, okay, just, just try to get a first down here. I'm just like, just go through progressions. Just try to get a first down. And this is a great read. I mean, look, look at his user. He commits here. He commits here. As soon as he does that, I'm telling myself mentally, I'm like, as soon as he bites here, I'm throwing that. I'm throwing that post. As soon as he bites there, I'm throwing the post. There it is. Easy. And it's like, Cody, you could have done that all game. <laughs> as I'm watching this back, I'm like, we literally, I literally could have done that all game. Here I go back to that bunch tight end play. This is honestly kind of, I don't know why I did this. Look what he does. I mean, his adjustments, his good adjustments. And I have the whip early. I just kind of like, this is another bad decision by my on my part. When you're running plays you've never ran before, you'll almost inevitably always stare it down. I actually rode out of the pocket and hit the corner late. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to say that was good. I think that was more lucky. But, I mean, that, that does happen. But that wasn't planned, right? And then I go back to this stupid play. It's like, what are you doing, dude? And then I try to throw that. I probably could have caught that. But I was so uh, mentally just – just spent. And this is where people say some of the best players Madden told me Madden is more mental at the highest level. It's, it's trying to play under pressure. It's making good reads. It's, it's executing. And, and at the highest level, that's more mental than it is anything else. So again, here, that's why it opened this time. I actually throw it right. And we take advantage of it. Had I just stuck to my stinking system and gone to my progressions, I would have been fine. This third down play call, I kind of wish I could do this over. Um, I have the bubble screen wide open. And I told myself, I'm like, if I get on a fourth down, I'm taking three. I, I told myself that because I felt if I – I felt I was playing decent enough defense on him, at least through this whole video, I feel like I was playing good enough defense on him that if I, if I could go up two possessions, I'd win the game. That's what I thought to myself. I thought there was no – no way my offense could sell me that bad. And, and I could, I just felt like I could just, and again, this is, this is the mistake. I started to try to like, well, let's just sneak out the win. Let's just sneak out the win. Let's just try to like, you know, Mickey mouse out the win as opposed to just being a better player, <laughs> you know, just, just executing better, just executing better, just uh, playing, playing better offensively, playing better defensively, calling, um, I mean, I, you, you. I just haven't seen him be able. I, I have not seen him, one of the best players in Madden, show an ability. And here I'm like, okay, scramble with CJ Stroud all you want. I have not seen him as one of the best players in Madden, one of the best players. I mean, literally, I don't know what his ranking is, but I mean, he was in the last live event, right? I mean, he is good, especially right now. So, and he's been in Madden Bowl the last two years. He's won a belt before. I mean, he's a really good player, right? Young kid. Um, as one of the best defensive players, one of the best players in the world, he was really not able to stop corner strike and Durham, two of the most fundamental plays in Bunch Strong. So I should have just called that, um, but I didn't. So defensively, really, I feel like I'm playing fine defense. I just want to play Bimba don't break defense. In my head, in my head, if I can make him take time, then I'm golden. So I just want him to him to take as much time as possible here, um, and. 
the running back, I'm like, okay. Uh, and I start kind of like being a little soft I, in terms of uh, my coverage. I feel like in general, just my defense was soft this drive. I wasn't like, I wouldn't say it was necessarily bad. He makes a great read here, and that was bad defense on my part, I will say. If you look here to the right side, I just, I, um, this is, I just made a hash mark mistake. When they're short side like this, this uh, outside third is just bad. I feel like a, a quarter probably doesn't play that better, but a quarter at least plays something. He goes for an onside. I'm like, oh, crap. I wasn't even paying attention to that. I didn't think he'd go onside. It's actually a really smart decision by him. I have to win, burn a timeout. It's really not that significant, but it, I, I burned two second half timeouts. Don't want to have to do that. So 38-35. He goes for onside kick. I get it. No reason to talk about that. And now I'm like, oh, I forgot. I have Derrick Henry, and I have that little X factor on him. So I'm like, whoa, uh, maybe like the Lord will just allow me to run the ball on him. He's one of the best players in the world. Of course not. He's going to have something. He's going to have something for it, right? So he comes out in dime normal. So note to self, if you're looking for good run D, probably dime normal is one of the better ones, either that or nickel over, I would assume. And all he wants to do is stop the run. Well, we run the ball first play. And we get three, four yards. And my, <laughs> I just immediately like go to Bunch Strong, and which is fine. Like I should have, I should be able to get a first down. If I get a first down, I feel like the game's over. Because um, even if I have to settle for three, it's not that big of a deal, right? So um, anyway, we go to Durham. He has not been able to stop Durham all game. Not been able to stop Durham all game. And it should be my play call here. But my protection um, this is what I was talking about, like where I can't pass protect, right? And I am so dumb for this. So look at this right here. So he, this is good. Like we're fine. This is fine. Now, my thought is if you look at this adjustment, I would assume this is a hook curl here. And then what it's probably shaded up because what we probably did was we shaded down, shaded up on the hook curl and on this cloud. So this is really good defense. And then he is going to use her this. And then he hard flatted here. And hard flat here. This is probably the best defense you can play against of, against this formation. Okay? It's really good defense. But what I'm thinking ha will happen is I think this running back will clear the yellow zone eventually. And I'll be able to throw him over this yellow. So at this point right here, I'm like, now, I could have just scrambled, bro. I could have just scrambled. I throw this just a little early. Just a little early. And i just thinking, like, I just want to throw it right over this yellow zone. I'm thinking this is I'm thinking this is wide open. I'm thinking I just won the game. And Gronk just freaking mosses me. Jumps up, picks it off, and now he's good. I mean, it's at, at that point, you know, I'm so mentally just bad. And I'm just like, man, I just lost this game. Again, mental, mental, mental. Um, I just lost this game. You know, maybe I can hold a three, but, I mean, he's one of the best offensive players in the world. And I try to uh, – basically what I do defensively here is I just play – I honestly play really good defense on the first play. And what I – what I essentially happens to my mental me mentally defensively here is I am trying almost too hard to get a stop. And when you start to try too hard, especially against some of the best players in the world, you start to do stuff that just doesn't make sense. So right here, I know, um, I know that this defense right here, really the only the only thing open is this corner out to the tight end. Uh, you would hope that this seam flat would do something. He just doesn't. So he goes to that. I go vert hook here. So he plays that running back streak. So the verdict plays there. I have to get over there a little faster than I did, because um, if I if I could get out there with my user, I mean this is just a good play. But there's his field goal, and now I'm like crap. He got his three. Now he's going to go for a seven. And, I mean, just mentally just just beat me. Um, you know, he was, able to, he was able to play through adversity. He was able to, um, you know, he, he, was, he, he just played better. And, and right here, I mean, this is just bad defense. Like I said, I got too aggressive. So I don't know why, but I'm <laughs> – I don't know why I called this. But my Bo Jackson, so it's literally the same route even. That's what's funny is this is a, a running back streak, and it's the same basic thing. But if you watch, what's Kiv do? He waits just a little longer to throw it, and it's wide open because I didn't put a middle third. Because <laughs> I put my middle third in a, 
in a cross man on the on the Y trail post. Over adjusted, kind of bend, uh, kind of uh, fell to the pressure of the situation and didn't play my best. Frustrating way to lose. Um, and then here, I just honestly, I'm just, I don't even know. I'm just trying to stop the run. I kind of already decided I lost. Bad, another bad decision on my part. I actually really like this little goal line formation in the red zone. Um, if you look, like he really doesn't have, he really doesn't have stuff. Um, he probably does if he. I don't think he would pass against that normally. Here, yeah, I mean he he scores, and he doesn't score actually. His third and goal. I'm thinking, okay, just get a stop right here. You know, just hold the three, and then we you at least have a chance. Um, but I just I just haven't labbed against wing tide. I don't know. <laughs> um, I just haven't labbed this. I don't know for sure what stops these runs. And he's going to hit me with this little left side run again. And he's going to get his touchdown. And then I end up basically throwing four incompletions on offense. And that was the game. So really frustrated. Uh, frustrating way to lose. But honestly, like I feel like I learned a lot in this game. Uh, Kiv is just such a good player. And if you make mistakes, you pay for them. Uh, and, and I think part of the reason for that, as I look back on this game, is Kiv stuck to his system, whereas I was just kind of doing some random stuff. And um, I, I just think that's a big takeaway. You've got to play the game, not the name, because at the end of the day, it comes down to executing your game plan. And so hopefully you take something from this video. I, was, I wanted to show this. Um, yeah, kind of frustrated that I lost, but... Really fun little game. Glad I got to play Kiv. I've never played someone, or I, I've played good players before, but I've never never played Kiv before. So uh, just thankful for the experience. And, um, yeah, hopefully I'll be better going forward. Like I said, I as I look back at the game, there's so many things that I'm like, man, I wish I would have done this better. Or I wish I wouldn't have done this. And that's how you learn. That's how you grow. you got to get better. Um, you either get better or worse. So uh, hopefully th these are the kind of games you learn from. So, Anyways, super, uh, super excited about uh, our stuff on the Patreon. If you guys want to learn exactly what I'm doing, if you actually want to learn the system and run the system as opposed to me doing random stuff, you'll probably win better than I will. So the system always works. You have to commit to the system. You have to understand why it works. And then once you do those two things, it becomes execution. And me just doing these random route combos was really just me doing stupid stuff, honestly. At the end of the day, it was me overthinking and it was, again, playing the name, not the game. You should play the game, not the name. If you do that, it will make you a better player. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I know a little longer video, but wanted to share this with you. This was kind of one of those, one of those like, just games where you're like, man, I'm <laughs> thankful I got to play Young Kiv. Thankful I played decent for most part of the game. And then um, I just played terrible for uh, the, really, after the second quarter. So, see ya.